Good day, ladies, and welcome back to the next part of Animal Biodiversity. Woo! So today we'll be only be finishing the rest of the um, key features, and then after that we'll be actually doing the six different phylum. So I've included a um, table at the end of this, which I want you to draw, and then after you've drawn that, we'll be able to fill that in, and that will be your study guide to this entire little section. So let's get back so last we finished uh, cephalization and symmetry and an introduction and um, I explained to you where what it was simple and complex complex and more evolved and less evolved all right so now we're going to be looking at the tissue layers developed from the embryo so now uh, before we continue with what's on the left hand side let's have a look at the diagram on the right so over there you have a zygote so a zygote is when a sperm and an egg fuse and we now have a individual that is diploid then it starts to divide rapidly. Um, you don't need to learn this, by the way. So this is just for explanation purposes. So you can see what is going on. Eventually, we create something called a blastula, which is a hollow ball. And that is important to explain because if we look at the cross section over there, could I push my finger through that? Sure. But I mean, it's not like anything is pushing into it but it actually starts to fold in on itself, and that is called gastrulation. So you see the little uh, diagram over there, it has arrows going towards the inside of the hollow ball, and that creates a dimple. That dimple eventually starts pushing and growing to the inside of that hollow ball. So now you technically have a tube within a tube, or a ball within a ball. Once that forms, we then form something called the gastrula, okay? So once gastrulation has taken place, we then have the gastrula and that is that bit that is open at the bottom over there and you can see from the last diagram with the blue and the yellow the yellow component will be the gut so that will be the entire inside of the individual um, so for instance your mouth your esophagus your stomach your intestines your colon all the way to your rectum and eventually your anus okay so that is that yellow tube and the blue is your skin Okay, so that's holding everything on the outside. Now, eventually, we're going to have stuff in the middle over there, but now we're just going to deal with the basics. All right, so now you have an understanding of how another layer can form inside. So the blue layer is called the ectoderm, or the outside layer, and the inside is called the endoderm. You need to know those two words. All right, so now let's look at the left-hand side where it says diploblastic. So dip or die means two. Um, uh, diploblastic coming from the blastia seal so it just means a two-layered organism these are very primitive animals or under evolved animals they only have two germ layers now before you ask at the top over there it says each of the three layers of cells the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm that are formed in an or, 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 sorry formed in the early embryo okay so a germ layer is just the layers that are created while this entire thing develops and we're only looking at diploblastic now we'll do diploblastic in a bit so um, cell layers are separated by non-cellular jelly-like layer called the mesoglia. At the top over there, you saw, you saw the word mesoderm. Meso meaning middle or in between. So this is a mesoglia. It's not a mesoderm. The so mesoglia is a jelly-like substance that just keeps the ectoderm from touching the endoderm. And the development um, is limited as they cannot develop organs. So in that empty jelly-like space, there's no room for attachment. And if there's no room for attachment, there's not going to be any um, development of organs.
So I recommend you draw this. It's just a very simplistic view of what the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm are. Um, and it's maybe just a nice way to remember. Um, I will never ask you to draw it, but I expect you to recognize it. Then we have the development of a coelom. No, it's not the coelom or colom, or I've heard some amazing like pronunciations. It's called the coelom. All right, now the coelom is going to be important because if I had an ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm, all three of those layers are directly attached to each other. So for instance, if you were a triploblast and you did not have this, this fluid-filled space and you were running, your food would become mashed up while you were running. It's because nothing is independent of each other. All three of those layers are attached to each other. And we'll see pictures of that in a bit. So it's evolution brought about the development of an additional body cavity. The coelom is an internal fluid filled space that develops in the mesoderm um, of certain triploblastic animals. Okay, so can you get a coelom in a diploblast? No, only triploblastic animals. And the coelom separates the gut from the body wall. So now you have your endoderm, which is your inside tube. So let's say that would be your intestines. And then you have your ectoderm, which is your skin. Now imagine your, in, your intestines were directly attached to your skin. You can actually like touch them and feel them. Um, you can imagine that this would put your, endo, your endoderm under a lot of like friction pressure and it could actually damage the body on the inside. So there needed to be some sort of way that in the mesoderm we could, we could create a brand new cavity and that cavity would be called the coelom. So you can either have a, you can either have a coelom or you could be a coelomate. Okay, so A indicating that it's the opposite of. So a coelomate would be no coelom where coelomate means you have a coelom. So how does the coelom help? Um, the coelom allows outer parts of the body to move independently to the inner parts of the body, and that is important. You need to learn that off by heart. Um, I will often ask, like, what is the biological importance of a coelom? Tissues in the outer mesoderm form muscles of the body, and the tissues on the inner mesoderm form the muscles of the gut. Um, I'll show you a picture of what I mean in a bit. Separating these two layers allow muscles of the gut to contract without affecting the rest of the body. Because imagine you have peristalsis now of your intestines and you can actually see that on the surface of the skin and that would actually stop you from moving. So how has it helped animals grow better? The coelom has allowed or allows for large and more complex organ and systems to develop. Development of the coelom rendered simple diffusion inadequate. So now, if you are an extremely small individual, you can rely on diffusion to get your nutrients across. So let's say you're a single cell. Um, when you go through the process of phagocytosis, you know that the um, food is going to be distributed amongst the entire cell. When you start adding a few trillion like, you know, 70 trillion cells, you can't rely on the movement. It would almost be like you would have to rub the food into your skin and hope that it got to your heart. So um, simple diffusion of nutrients just wasn't important. So now um, we are going to allow for transport of gases, nutrients and waste. So eventually we create a blood system and excretory system and this evolved to solve this problem. So now I can transport all my nutrients very quickly, but it is very energy expensive. However, it allows us to grow bigger and better. Okay, so note that this whole thing is just about growing bigger and better. I only want you to draw this middle column, all right? So this is the front view or the cross sections of every single different one, okay? So you can either have acelomate, coelomate, or pseudocelomate. Um, please don't worry too much about the pseudocelum, but I will briefly go over it. I will not ask you in a test about the pseudocelum. So if you are acelomate, you can see that the yellow is your endoderm, your digestive tract, your blue is your body covering or your ectoderm, and the red is your tissue filled region called your mesoderm. That is where some organs can start developing or muscle for that matter. In the coelomate, and um, that little bit over there is an annelid or a earthworm, uh, we have this body covering, the skin, we have the yellow again, which is your endoderm. We have the red, which is now um, muscle, as well as it just says tissue fluid region. And finally, now we have that white chunk, and that is called the coelom. So that is going to stop the movement of the inner red part 
uh, affecting the outer red part okay so that's what they were talking about the inner mesoderm and the outer mesoderm and if those are muscles they're not going to affect each other please note that they are still connected in some way and different animals are connected in different ways on the far right hand side i've included some 3d renditions of all of these things just so you can have a look at them so this is how pretty much you look like um and please note that your bones also originate from the coelom so we have the muscle layer which is that pink bit we have the gut which is the yellow the epidermis which is also known as the exoderm, exoderm and then we have a body cavity called the coelom all right i recommend you acquaint yourself with your coelom and understand how it's helped you to grow now last thing on the list is the number of gut openings um, primitive primitive acelomates have one opening to a sac like digestive cavity i just enjoy saying sac like it's disgusting so ingestion and egestion so putting food in your mouth and getting rid of food takes place through the same opening okay so your mouth is your anus evolved coelomates have a through gut with two openings a mouth and an anus even though i mentioned in the previous set of slides that your anus actually pushes all the way through and that becomes your mouth okay but you still have two different openings the through gut allows for special specialization tissues such as the stomach and intestines and finally allows undigested waste to be excreted through the anus so now that we have those that peristaltic um, smooth muscle which is pushing food all the way from the esophagus at the um, rectum we now have um, excretion Alrighty, so here is some diagrams for you and I recommend you acquaint yourself with these. So there is a sac like gut where the mouth is at the top and what goes in is what goes out. Whereas we have a complete gut or a through gut and this is where it has a mouth and an anus. And um, this kind of now like tells you or indicates to you that you are technically a tube within a tube. Your skin is a tube and your mouth to your anus is a tube. You're a tube within a tube. Get to it. <laughs> All right. Now, I really recommend that you draw this and um, have it ready for the next lesson because what i'm going to do is i'm going to speak about each one of these independently so i'm going to speak about the body symmetry of periphera cephalization of periphera number of tissue layers in periphera blood system periphera uh, development of sealant periphera number of gut openings periphera and then you're going to fill this in as you go along um, this will be the most easiest way for you to actually finish this entire section of work and make it the easiest way to study all right Hope you're having a great day, uh, grade 11s, and I'll chat to you soon.